Rogers Radio Show. Yes, folks, it's the Roy Rogers Radio Show for the whole family. Adventure, suspense, mystery, and music. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West. With Pat Brady, the Mellow Men, and an all-star cast. And now, here to greet you with a song and a story are Roy and Dale. Beyond the blue horizon, wait a beautiful day. Well, good evening, folks. Greetings again to the whole family. Tonight's story is about an old prospector, the kind of a never-say-die fellow who always hopes he'll strike it rich somewhere beyond the blue horizon. This old-timer's name was Matt Barlow. I first met him a few years ago up in the Mother Lode country and gave him a grub steak. Well, about three years went by, and I didn't hear from him. Then a month or so ago, I got a letter from old Matt, and he asked for another grub steak. This time, so he could make a trip out on the Colorado Plateau to search for uranium. I sent him a check, and he sent me an agreement making me a 50% partner in whatever he found. Then a few weeks later, I got another letter from him saying that he'd struck it rich and asked me to meet him in a boom town called Four Corners. So Dale and Pat and I loaded up bullet and trigger, and two days later, we were in snow-covered mountains just a few miles from Four Corners. How much further, Roy? Oh, it shouldn't be over four or five miles now. Well, boy, I hope so. Driving on this icy trail ain't my idea of fun. There's a sign, Roy. What did it say? Danger. Watch out for fallen rocks. Watch out for fallen rocks? <laughs> they mean fallen snow, don't they? What's that? Well, sounded like thunder. Well, it can't be thunder, Roy. Why, it's clear as a bell. Not a cloud in the sky. Roy, look! It's an avalanche! Step on it, Pat. Maybe we can get through. You can slow down now, Pat. I think the worst is over. Okay. Roy, just look back there. The whole road is covered. It's completely blocked. Yeah, I see. I guess we'll have to take another road back, Roy. If there's snow and ice, won't melt for days. There isn't any other road, Pat. This one is just a new trail that they built when uranium was discovered up here. You mean we're going to be stuck in four corners until this road is cleared? I'm afraid so, Pat. Let's just hope the town has plenty of water and supplies. That looks like the town right over the next hill, Roy. Yeah. Let's find the sheriff's office first, Pat, so we can report the avalanche. Then we'll try to locate Matt Barlow. Were you able to get the highway patrol on the phone, Sheriff? Yes, Roy. I told them about the road. Seems like all their bulldozers are busy over on the main highway. Might be four or five days before they can dig us out. Four or five days? That's terrible. Well, there really isn't too much to worry about, Miss Evans. Charlie Morgan, uh, he owns a general store, told me he's got plenty of water and supplies, so it could be worse. Four or five days? I should have brought my knitting. <laughs> I don't know, Pat. You might find Four Corners kind of interesting. It's a boom town, you know. Almost exactly like the ones that sprung up during the gold strike in California. You might even want to go out on the plateau and do a little prospecting. You mean there's a road out of town on the other side? No, not really a road, Miss Evans. It's the prospector's trail. You can navigate it with horses and burros, but not with a car. Besides, it doesn't go anyplace. Just up the mountain range. <laughs> and you can't cross that. I see. Well, I think we'd better go over to the hotel and find Matt Barlow. Matt Barlow? That's right. He's a prospector. I understand he made a rich uranium strike here. Do you know him? Matt Barlow. No, I can't say that I do. But then we have dozens of prospectors in and out of here every day. Take your hands off me, Matt. And I'm perfectly capable of navigating under my own steam. Uh, simmer down, Mr. McGee. A couple hours of sleep will do you a lot of good. What's the trouble, Sam? The usual, Sheriff. Mm. McGee here was raising a rumpus at the hotel. Rumpus? Rumpus, he calls it. 
Yes, since when can't a man raise his voice in the songs of his own motherland without the law interfering? <laughs> now, come on, Mr. <laughs> McGee, you need some sleep. God bless you and keep you. <laughs> oh, he'll be all right. The men hereabouts are all under pressure, Roy. Most of them have come a long way from their home. Some from as far as France, Australia, England. A lot of them have lost every cent they had in the world out there on that plateau. Hunting for that elusive stuff they call uranium. I understand, Sheriff. Well, we'll see you later. Okay, Roy. Oh, and say... You might ask Charlie Morgan about your friend Barlow. Charlie's general store is right next to the hotel. If Barlow's been out on a plateau, Charlie probably sold him supply. Right, Sheriff. Thanks. Did you ever see so many burrows? Not since I was in Mexico. They're wonderful little animals, Dale. They can pack more weight per pound than anything I know. Now, I guess that's why all the prospectors use them. That's right. Plus the fact that they're very sure-footed on narrow mountain trails. Here's the general store. Yeah. Good afternoon. May I help you? Well, I hope so, ma'am. We're looking for an open... Oh, for goodness sake. Well, Rogers, well, I, I, I'd recognize you anywhere. Well, hello. Are, are you Charlie Morgan? That's right. And you must be Dale Evans. That's right. Well, now, I'm right pleased to meet you. Uh, this is my niece, Millie. How, How do you do? do? We saw you folks down low die about two years ago. You was in a show. Hey, what you doing up in these parts, Roy? We're here to try to locate a friend of mine named Matt Barlow. Do you know him? Know him. Hey, I do, yes, sir. Cautious Matt Barlow. Got a mouth tight as a number four beaver trap. That's Matt, all right. Do you happen to know where he's staying? Staying? Matt? Now, Roy, you know Matt. He ain't one to spend money to sleep in a hotel bed. No, sir. He'll most likely be camped out somewhere near town. How long ago did you see him, Mr. Morgan? Well, now, let's see. I think he was in here yesterday. Millie waited on him. Millie? Yes, Uncle Charles. You waited on old Matt Barlow yesterday. Did he say where he was staying? No, but he did say he was going back out on the plateau today. Are you sure? Why, yes. He said he was going to be gone at least four weeks. Roy, why do you suppose Matt would ask you to meet him in Four Corners and then not wait for you? I don't know, Dale. Well, it sure beats me. And me, too. I think we'd better get a good night's sleep, and tomorrow we'll take a little ride out to the plateau. Here's your room, Dale. Good night, Roy. Good night. Matt. Turn on the light, Pat. Okay. Hey, Roy, there's a piece of paper under the door. Let's see. Sorry, I missed you. Must get back to claim. Return in about four weeks. Matt. Come on, Pat. Where are we going? Downstairs to talk to the clerk. Maybe he saw who delivered this. Well, maybe Matt brought it himself. He couldn't have. Charlie Morgan's niece said that Matt left town yesterday. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please get that beast out of here. McGee, I told you, you can't. You simply can't. <laughs> oh, now, Limey, me lad, he's only a small burro. And he's lost. Ain't that right now? You're lost, ain't you, dearie? <laughs> but I insist you cannot leave that animal in this hotel. What's the trouble, clerk? Uh, Mr. Rogers, these, these gentlemen insist upon bringing that better into the hotel. But the poor dear's tired and hungry. I found him fully packed, wandering around outside. Now I ask you, Mr. Rogers, ain't it a kindly, humane thing to do? Well, fully packed, huh? You're right, he is. Who does he belong to? Well, the name's right here on this leather strap. Let's see now. Property of... Matt Barlow. Oh, no, Roy. 
This is a pretty long shot in the dark. What makes you think that dog of yours can trace Matt Fence? Well, he's done it before, Sheriff. Go on, Bullet. Go on, boy. I still think this is a wild goose chase. Maybe, Sheriff. But you must admit that something very strange is going on. I know, Miss Evans. But... Hey, Roy. Bullet found something. Let's go. What is it, Roy? It looks like somebody's camp. Yeah. Or what's left of it? Uh, canned goods scattered around. Roy, looks like somebody had a fight around here. It sure does. Okay, Bullet, good boy. Look over there, Sheriff. Mm -hmm. Tracks coming from that clump of bushes. Straight up to this bedroll and... Roy, those bushes. Isn't that... Oh, bullet found something else, Roy. Yeah, come on. Roy! It's Matt. Matt. Matt Barlow. Matt, the sheriff. Can you hear me? Matt. He's still alive, boy. Matt. Partner. Who? Partner. What? Partner. What do you mean, Matt? You mean... dead. Well, at least we know who to look for. Who's his partner, Roy? I am, Sheriff. I'm his partner. I hope you appreciate my position, Roy. A dying man said that you killed him. That's not what Matt said at all, Sheriff. He said that his partner shot him. But he didn't have no other partners except Roy. That's true, isn't it, Roy? Well, yes, as far as I know. Matt was grub staked by a lot of people through the years, but I was his partner on this strike. There's no doubt about that. Well, then, you see, you can see what a spot I'm in. Sure, Sheriff. So far as I can see, there's only one thing for you to do. What's that? Arrest me for the murder of Matt Barlow. Roy, you didn't kill him. Well, of course not, but the people in this town think I did. If the sheriff doesn't arrest me, he's liable to have a riot on his hands. Roy's right, Miss Evans. Especially since nobody had anything to gain except Roy. Matt filed his claim four days ago. There wouldn't be any reason for anybody else to kill him except Roy. Roy, this is awful. What are you going to do? Do? Me? Or well, Nothing? Nothing? Well, great jumping uranium. You mean you're just going to let the sheriff arrest you and, and not try to find the real killer? Well, that's about all I can do, Pat. But I wouldn't worry too much about it. I think the real killer will turn up in a few days. Turn up in a few days? What kind of talk is that? Well, stop worrying, Dale. You have my word for it. The person who killed Matt Barlow will be exposed within a few days. And this time, we won't have to go looking for him. He'll be looking for us. Roy. Roy. Roy, wake up. Uh, oh, uh, oh, hi, Sheriff. Boy, this beats me. Roy Rogers arrested for murder and sleeping like a baby. Did you talk to Doc Murphy? Uh, did you give him my message? Yeah, I told him. That's why I woke you up. He's not at all sure you've got the right slant. After all, a lot of things could happen, and... I know, but this is our best and surest bet. If it fails, I'll try to think of something else. Now, if you don't mind, Sheriff, I think I'll go back to sleep. Okay, Roy. I'll let you know if there's... What's that? It sounds like a crowd. Well, I'll have a look. <laughs> Not a crowd, Roy. The mob. A what? A mob. The leader is McGee. He's drunk. And he's carrying a rope. Sheriff. Yes, Sam? It's the lynch mob. They're after Rogers. Oh, that's McGee. Okay. Let's get him and lock him up. Not me, Sheriff. Sure. McGee's drunk. He's got that mob all inside it. You can't handle him now, Sheriff. Sure. You better get Rogers out of here right away. Hey. Where's your horse, boy? Right outside. Okay. 
right up to the highway patrol station on the plateau. Stay there till you hear from me. All right, Sheriff, if you say so. But personally, I'd just as soon stay here and face him. You do as I say, Roy Rogers. I'm the sheriff here, and I'm not taking any chances. All right. Be sure to call me if Doc Murphy... I will, I will. Now get out of here fast. Now, Dale, it ain't no use turning on like this. Roy's okay. The sheriff said so. I know. But to be mobbed like that, to run away like a guilty criminal, Pat, it just isn't like Roy. It's not like him at all. What's that? Sounds like somebody at the window. It's Roy. Hi. Roy, what are you doing in town? That lynch mob will kill you. Oh, I don't think so, Dale. Not after we turn up the real murder. Oh, oh, by the way, we think we know who it is now. Uh, you, uh, you and Pat want to be in on the arrest? Boy, Rogers, I could... I... I could... Oh, I could just spit! You and Sam cover the back. We'll wait a few seconds before we go in. Whistle when you're ready. Right. Okay. Take it easy, Sam. No gunplay unless you have to. Right, Sheriff. I still can't understand the motive, Roy. It's a very old motive, Sheriff. Jealousy. I don't think he intended to kill Matt. He was simply trying to cut himself in on the strike. You see, he'd grub stake Matt in the past, but Matt never found anything. Mm-hmm. Then just a few weeks later, Matt turns up with this red strike. Mm. That's it. Let's go. Who is it? Roy Rogers. Open up. Uncle Charlie. We'd better break it down, Roy. Sorry, Pat. I'm sorry. Now, just a doggone little minute. How come all this poor Pat, poor Pat stuff after I risk my life? Charlie Morgan. And just lie there quietly, Pat. Doc Murphy is on his way over. Doc Murphy? I don't need no doctor. I feel fine. We know, Pat. Just don't exert yourself. Well, you were right, Roy. Charlie Morgan used to be Matt Barlow's partner, and he was in with him on every prospecting trip Matt made until this last one. That's right, Dale. And, of course, this one was the one that paid off. I feel sorry for Charlie Morgan, but it's no excuse for murder. Was it Charlie Morgan who planted the note under your door? That's right. He was trying to throw us off the track and stop us from looking for Matt. He also told his niece to say that Matt would be gone for several weeks. Well, I guess that explains everything. It don't explain nothing. It don't explain why Roy didn't do one single solitary blame thing to find the killer. And it don't explain why you've got me laying here like an infant in a crib waiting for the doctor. Oh, that's perfectly clear now, Pat. You see, Roy wasn't worried about finding the killer because he knew that sooner or later the killer would come to see Doc Murphy on account of the avalanche. The avalanche? What's the avalanche got to do with it? Oh, you see, Pat, it blocked the road and prevented anybody from getting out of town. Doc Murphy's the only physician in these parts, so Charlie Morgan had to consult him. Why? Was Charlie Morgan sick? In a manner of speaking, Pat. What do you mean in a manner of speaking? He was either sick or he wasn't sick. Well, Pat, he was sick, but in a kind of a peculiar way. You see, you remember that bush that Charlie Morgan crawled through when he followed Matt Barlow? Yeah. Well, uh, that was poison ivy. Poison ivy, huh? Oh, I see. 
And you knew that poison ivy breaks out anywhere from two to five days after it's... Uh, oh. Uh. You... <laughs> I'm sorry, Pat. I tried to warn you not to touch Charlie Morgan. Poison ivy! Oh, no! And, folks, that's the story of an old prospector and his dream of finding wealth and riches way out on the Colorado Plateau, beyond the blue horizon. Beyond the blue horizon, wait a beautiful day. Goodbye, dear Satan.